You and I will both agree that this is a favorite of long distance drivers, students, and those burning the midnight oil. But just how bad are energy drinks for your body? The excessive caffeine, the sugar, and other chemicals are known to cause serious heart conditions and excessive weight gain. Uh, several people have also died from continued use of energy drinks over long periods of time. Rieta Haramsa from the Association for Dietetics in South Africa joins us now to discuss this a bit more. A very good afternoon to you, Rieta, and thank you so much for your time. Is this a matter of overindulgence, or is it just energy drinks are bad for you? Um, I think you raised a good point, definitely, of the overindulgence or if it's bad for you. So I think we definitely have to see for person, per, like on a case-to-case -case basis, but the fact of the matter is that there's quite a few things to consider. So it's not as clear cut as a yes or a no. I'm leaning more towards the sides of a no for this one. How bad are energy drinks exactly? I mean, what is in all of these brands that are, of course, we know they're popular and we know why they're popular, but what is in these drinks that makes them harmful to one's heart, for example? So definitely remember that caffeine is a stimulant. So it definitely causes an increased heart rate. So definitely we have that tachycardia. And besides that, increased blood pressure. Now, definitely with South Africans' population and our predisposition already to have hypertension, we know that that's definitely coupled a, a lethal combination. Besides that, also remembering that the amount of sugar that it contains. So yes, energy gives us in the form of sugar. We know that sugar gives a quick energy spike. Couple that with the caffeine and sometimes other substances like grana. It's also another name for Brazilian cocoa, um, ginseng, um, B vitamins. So there's quite a few things in it. Um, remember the dose definitely determines the poison. And although they are natural, there are things that we, we still have to steer clear of. Um, but all in all, the, the problem is not necessarily with what it contains, but with also the, um, you know, the strength of it, how, how concentrated it is in an energy drink that we take in. Is it addictive? Is it an, an addiction thing? Like, can you get hooked onto the caffeine that is in an energy drink? I wouldn't necessarily say that it's addictive in that sense, so I, I would also not say that it is not. The thing is just what happens if we think about sugar as well, as you get that sugar high and you get that sugar crash, it almost warrants continued use. So if you drink your energy drink and we know that um, excess caffeine causes you sleeplessness at night, Next morning you wake up, you're a bit more groggy, and remember that caffeine is a diuretic, which means if you then in that sense become more dehydrated, become thirstier, the likelihood of you actually consuming more energy drinks just um, behind the thirst is also something that we have to take into account. So addictive in the sense of yes, if you feel that mental alertness and after a while feel I can't go without it. But I wouldn't say that if you have one drink and you're hooked, it's almost more the, the effects thereof that you that you chase. What does Rieta Harabsa from the Association for Dietetics in South Africa then suggest to somebody like Morana Mutupi who says, I hear you, but I actually don't want to leave my energy drinks. What then can I do to ensure that it won't cause me a heart attack? So definitely um, remember, I echo what all the dietitians always say, a well-balanced diet. So definitely if you run from fast food to fast food and processed food and takeaways and excess sugar, and then you have your energy drink on, energy drink on top of that, then we know it's not the best lifestyle. Um, so having your fruits and veggies, eating your lean proteins, remember there's food-based dietary guidelines that we formulated for South Africans for a reason. Um, but you're following all those balanced eating guidelines alongside to when you have an energy drink. It's also recommended by the World Health Organization that it does not seed, exceed one drink a day. Um, also remembering to still stock up on your fluids so that you're not uh, don't get the effects of the dehydration as well um, and then remember ultimately that if you feel tired it's best to sleep rather than chase the caffeine highs all the time um, so remember again all about that balance do you feel 
in your expert opinion, that brands are doing enough to ensure that their consumers and, their, and, and the people that buy their products are made aware of what it is that these energy drinks can do. And I pose this question to you because cigarettes obviously are, are obliged to essentially say to you, smoking can't kill you. So do energy drink manufacturers say to you, this may not do what you want it to do to you? I can tell you that I think that there's a lot of education that needs to be done, but not just by brands. I think by individuals themselves as well. The internet is this wonderful source of information that we have. Um, and I know that dietitians really try and get this message across. I think it's also something that rests, as you say, on the shoulders of brands, but also on the shoulders of individuals as well, um, where there's a lot of concern sometimes about what, what a label says, but we need to then in turn read what the label says. So um, I, I definitely think that it's gonna be a combined effort and it's not just one person responsible, Everyone needs to take that responsibility into their own hands about what they put into their bodies. Rieta, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Very much uh, enlightening a conversation that was. That's Rieta Haramsa from the Association for Dietetics in South Africa.